This is a GCSE video on sound waves. We know from our previous lessons that sound is a longitudinal wave, which means that it looks something like this, where the particles, this particle here, for example, is moving parallel to the direction of energy transfer. So a particle here would move backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, and the sound is traveling this way. So sound is sometimes made by speakers, and you can see if you have a large enough speaker, you can see that the skin of the speaker, this bit here in the middle, moves forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. Now you can see that happening because it's creating a sound wave, it's creating these areas of compression and rarefaction, and it's making the particles do this. And so the more it vibrates, the more it continues to create that sound which travels this way and it makes the particles move left and right parallel to the direction of energy transfer because the speaker is moving parallel to the direction of energy transfer. Now sound is the movement of particles. It's this particle moving backwards and forwards. So sound needs particles in order to travel. So you do not get any sound in a vacuum. Vacuums cannot transmit sound because there are no particles in a vacuum. Now we can reverse that and say if we have more particles, then sound can travel faster. So actually in air, sound, sound travels at around 300 meters per second approximately. In water, where the particles are closer together, because liquid, the, in a liquid the particles are closer together in a gas, in water the speed of sound is around 1500 meters per second. The particles are closer together so it's easier for them to pass their vibrations and so sound travels faster. And so, as you would expect, in a solid the speed of sound varies depending on the density of the solid, but it's approximately somewhere between 3,000 and 5,000 meters per second. We usually write meters per second like this, but it means the same thing if you do ms to the minus one. Now we also know that sound is a wave, and sound waves transfer energy just like all different types of wave. Waves all have frequencies, and waves all have wavelengths. And waves also all have amplitude. If you remember from our diagrams earlier on in the waves unit, we can draw a wave like this, and we can put a central line on there and we can say that the wavelength is the distance from one crest to another, the frequency is the number of waves per second, and the amplitude is this bit here. Now the frequency and the wavelength are very closely related. If we make the frequency higher, we make the wavelength lower, and if we make the wavelength higher, we make the frequency lower. Um, the amplitude is slightly different, and if we're looking at a sound wave, you might already know, if you're interested in music, that the frequency of a sound wave affects how high or low the pitch is. So if, you're, if we go back to our speaker example, and your speaker is moving f backwards and forwards very fast with a high frequency, then the pitch of the sound is high. If you have a sound wave with a very low frequency, 
meaning that the speaker is going backwards and forwards very slowly, that's a low pitch. So a high frequency would give a high pitched sound and a low frequency would give a low pitched sound. Now you can't hear every single type of frequency, every single value of frequency of sound because the human ear is only capable of hearing a certain range. And that range is about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So that's 20 waves per second to 20,000 waves per second. Any higher than 20,000 waves per second, and we call it ultrasound. Ultrasound is used for scanning. Um, you might have heard of it because when somebody is pregnant and they want to see the baby, you use an ultrasound scanner to help create an image of the baby and they send sound waves into the woman's uterus and the reflections of those sound waves form the image and those sound waves because they're ultrasound we can't hear them because they're above 20,000 hertz we also can't hear anything lower than 20 hertz it just sounds silent to us because our ear isn't capable of hearing it so this is the range of human hearing now, if we look at amplitude, amplitude is slightly different. Amplitude is not directly related to the frequency in the wavelength. Amplitude is the height of the wave here. So if we have a wave like this, and then we have another wave like this, the difference between these two waves is the amplitude. The one at the top has a very low amplitude. The one at the bottom has a very high amplitude. Now the amplitude is related to the volume of the sound. If you have a large amplitude, then it's a loud sound. And if you have a small amplitude, then it's a quiet sound. So a sound wave can be described by its frequency and its frequency relates to its pitch or its amplitude and its amplitude relates to its volume. A large amplitude is a loud sound. A small amplitude is a quiet sound. So just to complete the examples, if you had a sound wave, if you had two sound waves and one of them looked like this, and then one of them looked like this, first of all, we can see that the frequency of this sound wave below is lower. Oh, sorry, is higher there are more waves per second. That is a high frequency. So because the frequency is higher, we know that the pitch is higher. So therefore this one, the pitch is lower. We also, we also know that this one, the amplitude is smaller than this one. This one has an amplitude of that much compared with that much. So the amplitude, the height of the wave on this one is larger, so that means this one is louder. So this sound wave is a higher pitch and a louder sound.